Hey everyone, this is Jacob Brown Lures. We got the Flappin' Devil coming out in about a month. People always ask us how we go from an idea to a prototype to a working final product that's actually on the pegs at Academy or other stores you might go to. Today we're going to show you how we do that. The key to our product development is to come up with as many ideas as we can and test them out as quickly and cheaply as possible. That way we're throwing out hundreds of new ideas every year, seeing which ones get good feedback, what people like, and in the end hopefully we end up with something that people really enjoy and it's something that's useful rather than us just coming up with a product that we threw out there and said, hey, please buy this. Basically, we'll start off with either a wood carving or a clay model. Uh, we can use these clay models or uh, wood carvings to basically make a RTV rubber mold, which then we can actually make a hard pourable mold that we can pour hot plastic into to make an actual complete working prototype lure. We actually use a mold building table which will allow us to form up the actual area we want to pour RTV silicone into. Once we form up this area, we can have the lure suspended, either the wood carving or the clay model. We'll pour up the silicone about halfway to about the seam of the lure. Um, once we do that, the actual rubber will set. After the rubber is set, we can actually pour the top half of the mold. So then, as we're actually finishing the mold, we'll have two parts that we can effectively pour a hard negative and a hard positive from. The next step in the mold building process is to actually pour our hard negatives, which we're actually going to be able to pour our plastic into to make a full working prototype. First step is to take our silicone mold. Usually we'll try to use a, uh, a wood carving because the wood carving will actually let us separate the two parts without destroying our prototype. We'll actually insert the wood carving into the silicone, pour a negative uh, out of aluminum epoxy all over the top. We'll then remove the aluminum epoxy, place the model in the other side of the RTV, pour once again, and then we'll actually have two sides of the mold that we can actually pour directly into with hot plastic to make a complete working prototype. Now we can actually take this and put it into the computer and get the results we need for a production ready mold. Using programs like Inventor or SolidWorks, I can then transfer the dimensions of our prototypes into the computer so we can get a production test mold machined. We saw in the last step that we actually had a test mold where we poured a single shot. And we're actually gonna take this, I can transfer it into the software, and we're actually only one step away pretty much from having a fully functioning mold that allows for multiple lures to be injected at one time. At this point, we can actually get fishing guides and also other anglers to actually get us feedback on what we could do to make the lure better. Uh, we've actually already made the prototype, and once we actually get feedback on the samples, we can make any changes in the digital version that we need to to make it a fully functioning, ready-to-hit-the-shelves lure. Once we're happy with the design we've come up with and gotten all the feedback we need and incorporate it into the redesign of the lure, we can actually send that file off and get a complete production-ready mold machined that'll actually be able to spit out as many cavities as we can handle in the machine. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this and want to see more behind-the-scenes content on what we think is one of the coolest jobs around, uh, just leave us some feedback, comments below, and let us know what you want to see, whether it's more prototyping design type work or anything else you can come up with.